Hello everybody and welcome back to Zero Calvin. Today I'm going to show you how to print with semi-flexible filaments on the Prusa MMU2S multi-material unit. Now it's important to note that Prusa does not yet officially support the use of flexible filaments with the MMU2S, and for good reason. After all, the nemesis of the MMU2S is stringing during filament changes, and flexible filaments tend to be super runny and stringy. Therefore, I am labeling this video as a masterclass, which is not intended for MMU2 noobs. If you're still struggling to get reliable PLA prints with the MMU2S, then I suggest you stop the video right now. All right, I got rid of all my viewers and now I'm off to the pub. Okay, okay. I guess for the one or two masochists out there that are still watching, I'll continue. Just remember that this is intended for semi-flex TPUs like NinjaTech Semi-Flex or Cheetah, or the SaintSmart TPU that I will link to in the description. I have had zero success with really soft TPUs like the original NinjaFlex. So with all that said, let's begin. We're going to start by creating a semi-flex profile for the MMU2S. So you'll notice that if you select the single material printer, you are given the option to select a semi-flex filament. Um, but if you switch over to the standard multi-material printer and then try to select the same thing, it's just not there. This is because, the, like I said before, the semi-flex isn't supported. So in order to get around this, with the multi-material printer still selected and say a Prusa Mint PLA selected, go over to your filament settings, click on dependencies, and under compatible printers condition, select and copy all of the text. Now you're gonna go back over to the single material printer and select the semi-flex preset. Make sure it's selected. Go back over to dependencies. Select that whole thing, delete it, and then paste in what you previously copied. Now you're going to hit save and save that profile under your own custom profile. Once that's done, you'll be able to go back over to the multi-material printer and you'll notice that the, our new profile for Semiflex is selectable. And if you go over to the filament settings and you take a look at them, it's copied all of the standard Semiflex settings over to our new profile, which is perfect. Now, one thing I would suggest you change from the stock profile is to reduce the temperature from 240 down to 220. After you've done this, make sure you hit save and save the profile again. Now, the reason for this is to reduce stringing, but if you have problems with jams, then you may want to up this temperature again or perhaps print a little slower. Speaking of speeds, you would think that these print speeds would be obeyed for printing flexibles, but I've noticed a weird behavior in the multi-material setup in that uh, when this flex is selected for the filament type, then the uh, slicer uh, in it slicer includes these weird M220 commands into the G code. So you'll notice here an M220 S35 in the G code. Now what this does is it overrides your feed rate, your speeds, to 35% of what you had originally intended them to be. 
The unfortunate thing is that this also reduces your rapid speeds to 35% of what they should be, which isn't really good because it may um, make more strings. So you'll notice here, let me go to the next thing here. You notice that during unloads, we're at 100% speed. And then down here, for the load, we're at 35% speed, which is fine. Maybe you want to load uh, the flexible filaments a little slower. Unfortunately, there's no S100 to return it back to 100%. So it means your print, all these print speeds during the actual print are reduced to 35% while it's printing flexibles, which is really kind of confusing. And like I said, it's not good for the rapids either. So I think it's best to work around that. And what I do is I go back over to the filament settings here. And instead of this flex, I'll just select PET. Uh, once you do this, it will no longer inter, uh, inject those weird M220 commands. And um, from then on out, it will obey the speeds that you actually select without any weird 35% scaling. And I haven't actually been able to find out where that 35% comes from. So if anybody knows, then I'd, I'd love to know. I think it may actually be hard-coded into the slicer. So anyway, let's load up a project. So multi-material projects, I usually select all of the components all at once. Click Open. And if you do that, Slicer will ask you if if you want them to be combined into a single multi-material part, which is exactly what we want. So we hit yes, and it automatically makes it into a, a single object for us with multiple parts. So you'll notice we have the main object and then all the subparts here. And we also have wood extruder that each of those subparts is assigned to. Now with multi-material prints, the first thing I like to do is select the colors that I'm actually using. So we'll just go with uh, good old America colors, red, white, and blue. And then black for good measure. And this looks pretty good, I think, just by default. But if we did want to change around which colors are assigned to the different parts, you just do it over here. Like I can swap this one over to a two just by clicking on it, selecting two. And then maybe I want this part to be red instead. So there we go. There we go. We swapped the red and the whites. So really that's about all you need to do, but for flexible filaments, we're going to want to reduce our speeds by quite a bit. Otherwise, we're just going to get some nasty jams. So I tend to like to just across the board change every single one of these to 20 millimeters a second. Now, if you have a preferred print speed for flex, then use it. Um, this is just what I tend to do to be safe. So once we've selected our speeds, we hit slice, and there we go. We have our lovely sliced snake. And if you want to reduce the purge volumes a little or fiddle around with that, you just click purge volumes there, and then you can change those settings there. So really, that's about it for printing with um, one object with that's all TPU. So let's, uh, let's get rid of this guy and we'll load in a uh, two-part object that I have that's uh, going to be a mixture of PLA and TPU. So again, select both of the components at once, click Open, say Yes, and it'll may become a single object. I want to move my purge block to the center, and this isn't quite fitting, so I'm just going to rotate this by 90 degrees so it'll fit on my print bed. There we go. Now the colors aren't right and the material's not right. So first off, what I want to do is I'm going to want to use, uh, instead of all semi-flex, the main part here is going to be Prusament PLA. So we'll just select the Prusament P. 
PLA. And the second part is fine as our semi-flex. Now I want the main part to be blue, and I want our semi-flex material to be black. So that's fine on black. Click OK. Uh, obviously, they're reversed, so I need to switch the assignments down below. So we're going to make the band material 2, make the main thing material 1, and there we go. So you would think we're home and dry, so we'll slice. And there we go. It looks great, right? Only the problem here is that um, although it looks fine, we have one major problem, and that's going to be our print speed. As you'll notice here, it's 21 hours <laughs> of print time, which is not good. And that's because it's using our slow TPU speed, even for our PLA. So we want to undo that and just go back to the standard print speeds. Unfortunately, this isn't going to quite work either, because now it's going to also try to print our TPU at PLA speeds. So what you're going to do is select your TPU part, right-click on this little gear, and before I change the speed, I actually want to select infill, and I want to make my infill for my TPU part solid. So these are kind of like overrides for just your just some of the subcomponents. So I'm selecting just the the TPU component, and I've just over overrode the infill with solid. Now I'm going to go to the gear again, add settings, go to speed, select all my speed parameters, click OK, and it gives me all these down here that I can override. So I'm going to override them again, all with 20, or try to. Come on. There we go. Copy that and paste it all in all the other places. And again, you can use whatever speed you're you traditionally use for TBU here. So that should fix it. Now it'll by default print anything with our stock speeds and then for our TPU we've overridden with 20s and you notice our print speed is reduced down to about 13 hours instead of a million. And we're also assured that our TPU is going to print solid even though it's really so tiny here that it would probably have printed solid anyway. And that's about it for the slicer side of things. But before you run off and try to print with TPU on your MMU2, let's go over a few hardware issues first. We will start with um, reviewing how the optical sensor works. Uh, for those of you new to the MMU2S configuration, we have this long pole that's attached to the top of our filament door, which will swing inwardly when filament passes between the Bontech gears. Uh, when it does this, it blocks an optical sensor, so the printer knows that the filament has been loaded properly. Our problem is that semi-flex filament is squishy, so it doesn't deflect the door quite as much as harder filaments. This means that we really have to have our optical sensor, also called the chimney, adjusted properly. If the filament sensor does not detect the filament, then it keeps loading into the extruder with ugly results like this. Speaking of this, it is a good idea to open this door and clean out the schmoo once in a while. But before we even start to adjust the chimney position, we need to check the sensor mounting. I found that I could actually wiggle the plug back and forth, which is really changing the position of the sensor, and I can cause it to either trigger or not trigger when filament is installed. Not good. To remedy this, I just stuck some blue tape under and around the board, but feel free to do a better job than me. By the way, to get to the, the diagnostic screen for the sensors, follow these steps. After you have secured the sensor, loosen the two screws on top of the chimney so that it can slide around like so. 
Also, loosen the tensioning screw to about here. We don't need it to be so tight for flexibles. Uh, this also allows us to push on the screw head to open up space between the gears for us to insert our filament for testing. After inserting the filament, adjust the chimney to the point where you just get a one on the screen and then tighten the screws down. Once tight, you can pull the filament out to see if the reading changes to zero. Try inserting the filament and pulling it back out several times and adjust the chimney as needed. Once adjusted, then you are now ready to start printing and semi-flexible materials with your MMU-2S. Congratulations and good luck. This video brought to you by BrianKramerBooks.com. BrianKramerBooks.com for all your humorous science fiction needs.